Hello, Internet. I want to talk to you about counting. No, not that kind. No, not that kind either. I want to talk to you about the kind of counting that can easily fool you into believing something is obviously true when it's neither obvious nor true. Here's Lambda. Lambda just learned that his country has a thousand cases of some deadly disease, let's say vampirism, each year. Being a little paranoid, he badgers his doctor to test him for it. The test has a 99.99% accuracy. A few days later, Lambda gets a positive test result. Should he be worried? What are the chances that he's sick? If you guess that Lambda actually has a less than 1 in 10 chance of being sick, congratulations. Wait, what? How can such a highly accurate test produce such vague results? Let's find out. What do we know? We know how many people usually get vampirism in Lambda's country, how many people live there otherwise, and how good the test is. But that's not what Lambda cares about. The question he really cares about is, am I infected? Or rather, what are the odds or the likelihood that I am infected? The answer to this comes down to counting very carefully. The procedure is this. We first gather everyone relevant to our question. Then we split them up repeatedly into groups based on all the information we have. Finally, we identify the group that we care about and check how many members it has, or is expected to have, and perhaps compare it to some other group that we care about. Remember, the odds of something happening is simply the ratio between the various ways in which it can happen and the ways in which it cannot. So here are the 100 million residents of Lambda's country. Just for comparison, the United States has a little over three times as many people. Of these, we know that usually a thousand of them are infected at any given time. Now remember that our test has a 99.99% accuracy. If we applied our test on everyone, we expect the test to mess up once every mm, 10,000 trials, more or less. It's important to remember that these failures occur randomly. The test doesn't care if you're sick or healthy when messing up. The results will look something like this. Amongst the thousand who are infected, the test would almost certainly identify every single one of them. It's a really good test after all. Amongst everyone remaining, the test would correctly identify the vast majority of them as healthy. Well, 99.99% of them. Unfortunately, the test will mistakenly declare 0.01% of healthy people, that's 10,000 of them, as infected. The question now is, if the test declared you as infected, how likely is it that you are infected? Let's group everyone that the test declared as infected, healthy people and vampires. Lambda somewhere in here. Now how likely do you think it is that he's infected? A lot less than the 99% we initially had. It's actually less than 1 in 10. Weird, right? Now you might be wondering why we have to start with the entire population and whittle our way down. This is because when doing these counting arguments, we limit our grouping based only on the information we have. Lambda was not showing any signs of infection, he was not special in any other way. For all we knew, he was just another resident of his country. What if Lambda was showing signs of infection such as, oh, I don't know, glittering, or burning under sunlight, or I guess looking like this? We can add that to our diagram. For the sake of argument, let's say that such symptoms are universal amongst vampires, and uncommon amongst non-vampires, affecting maybe one in thousand people. If we didn't know this number, we could have set up a survey and found out. Then let's test people, but only if they're symptomatic. The test will still catch a few glittery but otherwise healthy people amongst all the vampires because it still has a 0.01% error rate, but now there are far fewer of them. Now take a look at the set of people who were symptomatic and were declared infected by the test. If Lambda had been symptomatic and had gotten a positive test result, we could be almost certain that he was infected. This is why doctors don't order tests indiscriminately. This curious result wasn't because the test for vampirism was bad. It was actually quite good. It was because the test was applied inappropriately. The error rate of the test was comparable to the fraction of test subjects that the test was trying to categorize. Only a tiny fraction of the population was infected, and the test had a tendency to mess up more often than that. It was akin to trying to knit lace while donning oven mitts. If we instead manage to filter the test subjects even a little bit, then the combined effect becomes powerful enough to give us the certainty we want. And why would I care, you cry? Because this variety of weird maths shows up everywhere, from spam filtration and quality control to medical testing and cybersecurity. It's important to recognize situations where your own intuition is about to fool you, particularly on issues that are important to you. And remember, once you eliminate the impossible, Whatever remains, no matter how improbable, must be the truth.